Hello. Hello. How are you? Doing good. How are you? Getting any sleep? Uh, last night, yes. Last night I had a sleep score of 91. Oh man, that must feel oh, good. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was great. <laughs> magical. I'll tell you. Magical. Yeah. But it's okay. We're almost, we're, we're almost through the thicket of it. She's about to be three weeks old. I've a couple times I've been like on coaching calls or having conversations with somebody and literally like I say something, it makes no sense. Or like my days are all mixed up and I'm just like, yeah, this happened. Yeah, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and they're like, dude, that you said that yesterday. You did that yesterday. I'm like, yeah. what? No. Yeah. You know, like just totally just all over the place. Yeah. Having a newborn puts you in a time warp. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you know, but it's nothing. I was talking, I was talking to the, I, I dropped off Haley at daycare this morning at the gym, and I was telling them, you know, I, I think, and, and for anybody that any uh, soon to be moms or, or dads out there that are worried about newborn stuff, I'll tell you being fresh in the experience, I think it's largely over saturated with fear. I, I don't, oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's not that bad. Yes. You wake up every couple hours. If they have a night of like cluster feeding or colic. Yeah. Those, those nights can be a little rough because you're tired, but if you're both supporting each other, um, it's like a four week period after about four weeks, things start to really, it's just that it's not like this goes on for like two years. It's just like living yes. hell in your house. It's like yes. the solid, like 30 days of like, just getting used to having the baby there but man i'm telling you it, it's it's not that bad it's really yeah. bad and we're so adaptable that it's like you just have to find the routine and that can be like that four weeks where you're adjusting can be really hard um but you you adapt like it's amazing what you can adapt to and being in a place where i don't have newborns anymore like the idea of going back and doing it again i'm like that sounds terrible. Like I, how did I ever do that? How did I do that five times? But then in the moment when I was doing it, you just, you figure it out and you do it and you make it through and it's so worth it. Like that's the thing. So worth it. So <laughs> worth it. Benefits yeah. outweigh the negatives so much. 100%. Casey's already more alert. Her eyes are open all the time. Now she's starting to look more like a human and less like an alien. And she's yeah. like, you know, at first, at first she only opened up one. She would always only open up one eye. She'd be like, right I'm like what are you doing finally she's like oh there you are hey what's up oh that's great that's great. <laughs> all right so so good news all around good news for you too yes i got yes. the blood back d d share, share with everybody talk to me about it i already went through it but please yeah nice um so the last uh the time before this that i got my blood work done i was i was still very um hypothyroid with a very high tsh uh, low thyroid hormones. And um, so my doctor took me off of the uh, thyroid lowering medication completely. Um, and basically after, I think it was like three weeks um, time period, my thyroid numbers are in a good range. Like for the first time in this whole process, all three, like the free T3, the free T4 and the TSH are all green. They're all good. Yeah, like so. something something that I was, and in fact, I'll just screen share if everybody wants, if you want to show everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Something that was really intriguing to me, something I just loved. Uh, this is the first lab test where everything's in the green. Yeah. Everything. You are yeah. in the green north to south. Yeah. Your thyroid numbers are all in the green. Your iron and ferritin levels are all in the green. Yeah. This is like, this is the maintain. This, this, yeah. is, this is the place we want to sit at. That's going to be the trick. <laughs> yeah. But you're all, but you're off medication. So hopefully this equalizes yeah. you. So I would yeah. say, well, what, what did your doctor say about retesting to make sure everything's still where it needs to be? I'm going to get another test in a couple of weeks because we're kind of in that period where we're trying to see if I'm going to swing back hyper. Like I could just be on my way back to hyper. Um, hopefully not. Or if I'm stabilizing. So it's, yeah, it's just keeping Maybe. a really close eye on it. We're the thing, thinking. the thing is, is that, is that, um, these tests are about relatively the same distance apart and already you can see the difference because this one, you're still in the red, right? Even when you're going up into hypothyroidism, but this is the first time you're in the green, whether you're hyper or hypo. And so I would think that if you were going back into hyper or the chances of you going to hyper were much higher, that this would, this would still be red. Like, I think that it, you you were making dramatic swings and this seems like a much more like leveling out. Now, of course, there's only one test and yeah. I don't want to put the cart before the horse because that's stupid. But I think your trend right now is very promising. Yeah. 
I'm hopeful. Very hopeful. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I'm happy about that. How are you feeling? feeling you yeah. Feeling? Yeah. Definitely feeling good. Um, you know, the exhaustion has dissipated. <laughs> um, yeah, feeling really good again, you know, because I've been swinging back and forth between feeling good and feeling weird and I'm back to feeling good. And I'm hoping that, you know, we can just cruise there. Yeah, it's what we want. And I think too, like, we talked about this before, uh, you know, before you went hype, uh, hy hypo, but like the amount of time that it's taken to get you to this place. I think I, I literally just talked about this on a post. I said that the ma there is a magic pill out there. There, there is a magic pill. Yes. It's called consistency. Yes. Okay. It's called consistency. I cannot tell you, like I, I work with clients and they'll always ask like, okay, this is what I want in 30 days. And I go, we'll see how far you get in 30 days. But most people, this is like, most of the people that I've worked with that have like severe thyroid dysregulation or severe metabolic adaptations or like severe hormone imbalance, this can be like a year, two year ongoing thing that this does not fix itself overnight. You didn't, it didn't mess up overnight. And I think that we often, I think Americans in general, and of course we have, we have followers and people and people we coach that are not in America, but just speaking of what I, you know, normal audience, Western culture more so where we think we have a very skewed idea of what patience is, right? <laughs> like when we, like, when you talk to her, you're like, oh, I'm patient. And it's like 30 days later, they're like, this is taking too long. I'm like, that's, that's not patience. Your, your, your idea of patience is directly reflected of your fast paced lifestyle, mm. right? Do you, because things move so fast in our lives, because Americans are just so busy, we don't know how to slow down. Mm. Like, you know, to us, things move so fast that 30 days, we, a lot happens to it. Generally a, a Western society citizen happens a lot. A lot happens in 30 days to them. Yeah. Career wise, relationship wise, family wise, business wise, life wise. And so like 30 days feels like forever, but in the grand scheme of life in the grand scheme of how your body functions physiologically, right? Cause, and I, and I believe this to my core, like humans physiologically have not caught up to the circumstances that Western mm -hmm your experiences on a day-to-day -day. the level of comfort the level the level of accessibility the level yeah. of technology the level of the pace of it all our body and i don't think our bodies are well i don't know if our bodies are designed to deal with this like our bodies mm -hmm. are designed to like handle this kind of pace um mm -hmm. we seem to be adjusting because it's like there's two extremes the extreme comfort and then also the the pace like you're saying like that's they seem opposite but like the combination of those seems to cause so much problem. Well, and I think, and now we're getting, we're not even talking about nutrition at this point. This is all psychology, but it's, I think too, they, they do sound like they contrast, but I think they're actually synonymous with each other in that humans, we are designed to chase comfort, which is part of our design intentionally because up until about 150 years ago, you were never, you were never com fully comfortable every day. Like you, like you yes. were designed to wake up and chase a meal chase yes. chase finishing the day on a good note because that meant you had food in your belly and your your roof wasn't leaking and you could go to sleep with your kids in a, in a house with a door right like like that was you were chasing that because that's what you had to chase every day and so i think the pace actually exacerbates the comfort because we get comfort much faster now than we used to yeah. and so it compounds and it just creates this very i know obviously like within the confines of society that we live in some people wouldn't deem their lives comfortable but in general like if you wake up like because you know, again i've done mission work in like third world countries and i'll tell you they're there i love going to the philippines because life moves much slower there in fact mm -hmm. we have a we have a thing where like something i have to tell when i lead a team out there um people people there if if we have a meeting that starts at five. Don't even try. If we tell them five, don't even try to show up until like six thirty. Yeah. They're not going to show up. And when they show up at six thirty, they're going to just be happy to be there. They, they care much more about the experience than like being uh, punctual because yeah. life moves much slower for them. Um, but compared to their life, their lifestyles in general. If you wake up and you have a roof over your head and you got food in the pantry, regardless of quality, you got food in the pantry, all that, you are you are rather comfortable. And I think that that. One is hard for us to conceptualize within the context of like what we see every day in the world, um, but I think it creates this pattern of like 
uh, uh, entitlement, instant, instant gratification is a real problem. It's a real yeah. problem, especially yeah. when it comes to metabolic healing. Yeah. Yeah. It should take work to get to comfort. Absolutely. And, 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 and generally, yeah, absolutely. It's not hard. It's not hard to get general comforts, like general, like hierarchy of needs, right? Like basic needs are easy to meet um, in, in our lifestyles. And so yeah. I think that that skews our perception of how long it takes to heal physiologically from something or metabolically or whatever have you. So I just think it's, you know, your story is a testament to like being consistent, doing the things, yeah. making adjustments when you need to, but like finishing well. And, and yeah. It's awesome. yeah. I, I do think that the whole marketing thing that we have going here plays into it as well, because I mean, how many magic pills are there out there that say guaranteed in 30 days to do X, Y, Z. And so, you know, you could probably make a lot more money and get a lot more clients if you guaranteed some very fast results. <laughs> Oh, oh I, uh, all the time, you know, um, I'll, I'll go watch a free seminar because like, obviously I want to grow my business. Obviously I want to, I want to impact millions of people's lives from metabolic health. Like I have, I have goals. I want to, I want to leave a legacy of health and healing to people like, you know, as big as I possibly can. And like, I'll join webinars and it's always all the people that make millions of dollars with like health and the coaching spaces mm -hmm. and stuff. It's always like a 30 day get shredded challenge or yep. a, eat this way and you'll never have to eat different ever again. Like it's like these really yep. concrete promises. It's like the, it's the shiny egg. It's like here, here, here's this glittering egg. I promise you, here's my abs. Here's my flat tummy. Here's me in perfect lighting, doing a crunch sign up now and get like this. I promise you results 100% money back guarantee, which brings down the, you know, brings down the, the walls of the person, even though getting that money back is extremely difficult via email, blah, 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 ring and all that. But like, the point is, is like those systems that promise that, that may are super, super successful. There is a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of dirty baggage <laughs> behind a lot of that. Yeah. And then how many of the consumers just bounce from golden egg to golden egg their entire lives trying to find that one magic bullet until they just finally like there's nothing and give up. Absolutely. I'm telling you that the one magic pill in life is consistency. Just yeah. show up, just show yeah. up, be consistent, give some, I, I would, some people argue with this, especially from a phallus perspective, which we can debate that. Right. But I always say, try to give something at least 90 to a hundred, like at least six months, like try to give something, especially yeah. if you're like dealing with like, maybe not like fat loss. Cause yeah, if you haven't lost weight in fat six months, that thing ain't working. Something's wrong. You should be losing fat at that point. For sure. But I think if you're dealing with like metabolic issues or hormone issues or whatever, yes, give it at least a solid six months of like your time before you before you call it quits. And yes, that costs financial investment. Yes, that costs your time. Mm -hmm. But it's like giving something six months that could work. Like most things that will work, you won't know if they're gonna work for at least three to six months yeah. minimum. And so why it's it's better just to invest your money in something for six months and give it a chance then invest your money into something different every 30 days like most people do. Yeah. Well, thinking about my ferritin issues and thinking about like how many years I dealt with low iron and low ferritin and when I wasn't testing where I didn't know that that was my problem, I was just going on my symptoms. Like the idea of being at low iron and doing something for 30 days and not feeling better, like ferritin takes a super long time to increase. So it could have been that whatever I was doing for 30 days was having an impact, but there's no way I would have seen it in mm. my symptoms alone in that amount of time. So it's like, looking back, I'm like, I have no idea what these things that I did, did for my ferritin, or if I, you know, if I had continued it, if it would have made a difference or not, you know, it's like, just the idea that wow, some of these hormonal things and nutrient things, they can just take so long. That's where, I mean, I think testing is super important for a lot of stuff where maybe you do see that 10 point rise that is significant, but doesn't translate yet to your symptoms being better. Um, so yeah, just the idea of consistency and the idea of testing so that you actually have something concrete to, to go on. Um, those have been things that I've you know thought about over this this journey that I've been on. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think you've done great though. You, you stuck with it and 
you know, hopefully, again, we don't put, don't want to put the cart before the nope. horse. But nope. I've done that too many times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but hopefully things continue on the right path. Yeah. Are you enjoying your eating plan at the moment? More I am, or, yeah. How'd that go? How'd the weekend yeah. go? Well, it went really well. I, you know, I've been tracking on and off for the past 20 years. So I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I'm a veteran of tracking. So for me, it wasn't difficult. I, I can visually kind of figure things out pretty well. Um, I definitely know that people who aren't as familiar with tracking, it's a really good exercise, like to track and then to, you know, like, like we talked about last week, do the, um, tracking after the fact and kind of seeing where you're at. And so I did fine with that. Um, but I definitely think it's a great exercise for people to, to really solidify like what they're eating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You feel like it's really taking the edge off the more intuitive. Yeah. It it's been, yeah, it's been good. It's so for me, like, since I have lots of kids at home and I'm cooking a lot of family meals and stuff like the, just the stress of like having to weigh everything when I'm cooking a big pot of whatever, and figuring it all out for myself, you know, it'd be a lot easier if I was just a single person or, you know, cooking for myself each meal. Um, but just, you know, it just gets complicated when you're making a big pot of something for everybody and have to figure it all out for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> how, uh, how's the running going? I, I, I hadn't updated up to this point. I wanted to wait till we talked. Um, it seems like your numbers are, are getting better. Uh, yeah, definitely. they do. They do. I mean, it's, it's kind of an up and down thing. Um, probably depending on hormones, probably depending on my, you know, adjustment after getting off the medication. I think my body's, uh, hopefully it's getting, you know, to a point where it's more level, although I'll still have days where my heart rate is just way higher than the day before. Um, and so I don't know if that's, that's normal or has to do with my cycle or has to do with, you know, transitioning off the medication. Uh, I have no idea, but I just kind of. So it definitely, it definitely can be. Um, I think we all, like I, there, to be fair, like, you know, as much as I run and stuff, there are definitely days where I wake up and my heart rate's higher and I'm, my body's just stressed out and I just take the day off. So I think that's important to note too, because it's more about like the consistency trend over time. And if every, you know, once a week or once every other week you wake up and your heart rate's a bit higher, your body's a bit more stressed. I think that's totally normal. Mm -hmm. I think that's another good point. I think most people, <laughs> this is so important. I'm just laughing because I, I talk about this often. Yeah. Most people think that once they're fixed, that every day is just yeah. green grass. Yeah. And it's like, that's just not life, right? Mm -hmm. Life is more... Over the course of 30 days, what are your trends? Are you mo like 90% of the time, are you getting good sleep? Are you are your training sessions going well? Are you feeling good? Um, I think that people that say, I haven't had a bad day where I felt bad in six years, I think they're either lying or they're on something or they're superhuman. Like one of the three are going on. Yeah, or self-deceived. I think or that's self-deceived. Yes, yeah, so, you know, they wake up and they're tired and they're just like, oh, let me just have you know, let me just have coconut oil in my coffee. And then like, oh, placebo effect. I feel great. Yeah, that's all I needed. Um, but everybody, just because you're fixed doesn't mean you're never going to have a bad day. It's, yeah. I mean that from like a, like a relationship with food perspective, from like a metabolic health perspective, people have this weird idea that like, you're never going to have a bad day. And if you have a bad day, then something, oh my God, I, tell you, I, I cannot tell you how many people that have like six good weeks, they have one bad day. And all of a sudden they think their whole program is failing. And it's yeah. like, that is, that's normal that you're welcome. Welcome to being human. Yeah. And then that's when you jump to the next magic egg. <laughs> that's when you jump to the next magic egg. Exactly. exactly. Yep. Definitely. Okay. So I, have, uh, uh, okay. So I gave you uh, two more runs uh, tomorrow and Friday, Saturday, and then you're all set up for next week. Next week, your miles are going to go a little higher. You're going to do 12, 12 total miles next week. Okay. It's the longest you've gone, but you yep. can do it. I believe okay. in you. Thank you. <laughs> so cool. And then we'll just keep your eating the way it's been. Um, is there anything else that, that you wanted to cover that you had questions about? Um, I don't think so. I think, yeah, I feel like I'm kind of in, uh, like we're talking about, we want to be in a stable place with hormones. I feel like I'm kind of in that stable place with eating, with exercise, just keep on keeping on. Um, no huge hurdles. Like um, it's good. Good. 
Good. Like, All right. Well, then we'll just we'll just life. keep this cool. Life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah, we'll just keep the status quo then, and then cool. uh, keep me updated. And if we need to adjust anything as we go on, we will. Okay, sounds good.